In cardiology, the QT interval is a measure of the time between the start of the Q wave and the end of the T wave in the heart's electrical cycle. The QT interval represents electrical depolarization and repolarization of the ventricles. A length in QT interval is a marker for the potential of ventricular tachyarrhythmias like disades to points and a risk factor for sudden death. Correction for heart rate, like the RR interval, the QT interval is dependent on the heart rate in an obvious way and may be adjusted to improve the detection of patients at increased risk of ventricular arrhythmia. Modern computer-based ECG machines can easily calculate a corrected QT, but this correction may not aid in the detection of patients at increased risk of arrhythmia. There are a number of different correction formulas. The standard clinical correction is to use Babesit's formula, named after physiologist Babesit, calculating the heart rate corrected QT interval QTB. Babesit's formula is where QTB is the QT interval corrected for heart rate, and RR is the interval from the onset of one QRS complex to the onset of the next QRS complex, measured in seconds, often derived from the heart rate as 60 per hour. However, this nonlinear formula, obtained from data in only 39 young men, is not accurate, and overcorrects at high heart rates and undercorrects at low heart rates. Friedrichia has published an alternative correction formula using the cube root of RR. There are several other methods, such as regression analyses. Definitions of normal QTC vary from being equal to or less than 0.40s, 0.41s, 0.42s or 0.44s. For risk of sudden cardiac death, borderline QTC in males is 431 to 450 milliseconds and in females 451 to 470 milliseconds. An abnormal QTC in males is a QTC above 450 milliseconds, and in females, above 470 milliseconds, if there is not a very high or low heart rate, the upper limits of QT can roughly be estimated by taking QT equals QTC at a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, and subtracting 0.02 seconds from QT for every 10 a BPM increase in heart rate. For example, taking normal QTC a per mil 0.42 currency S, QT would be expected to be 0.42 S or less at a heart rate of 60 a BPM. For a heart rate of 70 a BPM, QT would roughly be expected to be equal to or below 0.40 S. Likewise, for 80 a BPM, QT would roughly be expected to be equal to or below 0.38 s. Measurement The measurement of QT interval is subjective because the end of the T wave is not always clearly defined and usually merges gradually with the baseline. QT interval in an ECG complex can be measured manually by different methods such as the threshold method, in which the end of the T wave is determined by the point at which the component of the T wave merges with the isoelectric baseline or the tangent method in which the end of the T wave is determined by the intersection of a tangent line extrapolated from the T wave at the point of maximum downslope to the isoelectric baseline. With the increased availability of digital ECGs with simultaneous 12-channel recording, QT measurement may also be done by the superimposed median beat method. In the superimposed median beat method, a median ECG complex is constructed for each of the 12 leads. The 12 median beats are superimposed on each other and the QT interval is measured either from the earliest onset of the Q wave to the latest offset of the T wave or from the point of maximum convergence for the Q wave onset to the T wave offset. Abnormal intervals, prolonged QTC causes premature action potentials during the late phases of depolarization. This increases the risk of developing ventricular arrhythmias or fatal ventricular fibrillations. Higher rates of prolonged QTC are seen in females, older patients, high systolic blood pressure or heart rate, and short stature. Genetic causes An abnormally prolonged QT interval could be due to long QT syndrome, whereas an abnormal shortened QT interval could be due to short QT syndrome. The QTC length is associated with variations in NOS1AP gene. Due to adverse drug reactions, Prolongation of the QT interval may be due to an adverse drug reaction. Many drugs such as haloperidol, vimirafenib, ziprazijan, 
methadone and certindole can prolong the QT interval. Some antiarrhythmic drugs, like amidrone or sotalol work by getting a pharmacological QT prolongation. Also, some second-generation antihistamines, such as astemazole, have this effect. In addition, alcohol in high blood concentrations prolongs the QT interval. A possible interaction between selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and thiazide diuretics is associated with QT prolongation. Macrolide antibiotics are also suspected to prolong the QT interval, after it was discovered recently that azithromycin was associated with an increase in cardiovascular death. Due to pathological conditions, hyperthyroidism, a condition of low function of the thyroid gland, can give QT prolongation of the electrocardiogram. Acute hypercalcemia causes prolongation of the QT interval, which may lead to ventricular chythmias. A shortened QT can be associated with hypercalcemia. Using drug approval studies, since 2005, the FDA and European regulators have required that nearly all new molecular entities be evaluated in a thorough QT study to determine a drug's effect on the QT interval. The TQT study serves to assess the potential arrhythmia liability of a drug. Traditionally, the QT interval has been evaluated by having individual human reader measure approximately 9 cardiac beats per clinical time point. However, a number of recent drug approvals have used a highly automated approach, blending automated software algorithms with expert human readers reviewing a portion of the cardiac beats to enable the assessment of significantly more beats per time point in order to improve precision and reduce cost. As the pharmaceutical industry has gained experience in performing TQT studies, it has also become evident that traditional QT correction formulas such as QTF, QTB, and QTLC may not always be suitable for evaluation of drugs impacting autonomic tone. Current efforts are underway by industry and regulators to consider alternative methods to help evaluate QT liability in drugs affecting autonomic tone, such as QT beat to beat and whole turbine methodologies. As a predictor of mortality, electrocardiography is a safe and non invasive tool that can be used to identify those with a higher risk of mortality. In the general population, there has been no consistent evidence that prolonged QTC interval in isolation is associated with an increase in mortality from cardiovascular disease. However, several studies have examined prolonged QT interval as a predictor of mortality for diseased subsets of the population. Rheumatoid arthritis Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common inflammatory arthritis. Studies have linked rheumatoid arthritis with increased death from cardiovascular disease. In a 2014 study, Panulas AL found a 50 milliseconds increase in QTC interval increased the odds of all-cause mortality by 2.17 in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Patients with the highest QTC interval had higher mortality than those with a lower QTC interval. The association was lost when calculations were adjusted for C-reactive protein levels. The researchers proposed that inflammation prolonged the QTC interval and created arrhythmias that were associated with higher mortality rates. However, the mechanism by which C-reactive protein is associated with the QTC interval is still not understood. Type 1 diabetes, compared to the general population, type 1 diabetes may increase the risk of mortality, due largely to an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Almost half of patients with type 1 diabetes have a prolonged QTC interval. Diabetes with a prolonged QTC interval was associated with a 29% mortality over 10 years in comparison to 19% with a normal QTC interval. Antihypertensive drugs increased the QTC interval, but were not an independent predictor of mortality. Type 2 diabetes QT interval dispersion is the maximum QT interval minus the minimum QT interval, and is linked with ventricular repolarization. A QTD over 80 milliseconds is considered abnormally prolonged. Increased QTD is associated with mortality in type 2 diabetes. QTD is a better predictor of cardiovascular death than QTC, which was unassociated with mortality in type 2 diabetes. 
QTD higher than 80 milliseconds had a relative risk of 1.26 of dying from cardiovascular disease compared to a normal QTD. See also, electrocardiogram, references. External links, cardiac safety section in the Biopharmaceutical Network.